I'm Helga from Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking and uh, today's kind of a special uh, presentation for you. So a couple years ago I actually did Halushki on my channel which is cabbage and noodles uh, but I did it the quick way. Um, I did the cabbage and onion and all and then I used what most people do here when they're making it and making it quick and that's using a uh, store-bought wide egg noodle which is, there's nothing wrong with it comes out really good but it's not the homemade noodles um, I do make them I just don't always have time to make them because it does take a little bit longer time uh, to do them um, I've done PA Dutch egg noodles but halushki noodles are a little different so uh, today we're gonna make halushki with the homemade noodles and uh, show you how we do them here and it's not that they're hard it just takes a little extra time till you uh, make the dough roll it out cut them and then boil them and then fry them <laughs> so that's why it's not as quick um, but it tastes out of sight so homemade halushki noodles today that's what we're doing tis fall time to use up that cabbage homemade halushki is where it's at so Here's what goes in it. Pretty simple for the uh, cabbage part. I'm going to use half a head of shredded cabbage, a sweet onion, a couple cloves of fresh garlic crushed, and then for our dough, it's going to be. I start out with three tablespoons of milk, three eggs, a teaspoon of salt, and then I add uh, enough flour to make a stiff dough. We'll roll it out thin and cut it. Um, usually that's roughly two cups, um, but it varies a little bit from time to time. You'll know when we get the right consistency dough. Also, in starting to prep, while I shred my cabbage and stuff, I'm getting my pot of water um, to uh, boil the noodles in ready. And I'm going to do my cabbage and onion and garlic and get that steaming here um, in the uh, larger pan. So that, that takes a while to uh, get tender. So while that's sauteing, this comes up to a boil. By the time we're done with our noodles, we can put them in here to boil. And because uh, that takes about 20 minutes. And then we add it over to the cabbage and finish it off over in the big pan. Okay, so I uh, melted that stick of butter in my big pan. And I just sliced my cabbage uh, into long shreds and the onion and crushed garlic and they're in there working away and my pot's at a boil now we do the pasta part now i'm going to give my three eggs a mix and i'm going to add my salt to that and my milk. I'll give this another mix. I'm going to transfer it in here. Now, traditionally, make the you make the well with the flour and add the uh, add the eggs. That's what you do with the egg noodles. This is a little different. And that's going to be about two cups and we'll go from there. not bad. It's got a still a little bit of stick to it, a little bit of play to it, so I'm going to add just a little bit more because I want this to be a little bit stiffer dough. And I think this is going to be it. 
So that was maybe like two and a half cups. Like I said, you know, sometimes even with environmental um, environmental factors and stuff, it makes it plays a part. But that's more that's more the dough that I wanted to see. And yeah, there it is. So uh, I think that's a stiff enough dough. It's not too bad. And uh, we're going to roll this out and uh, then we'll cut it up into our noodles. So we have our dough here and our dough had a chance to rest a little bit. I'd give it like five, ten minutes to rest. And then we want to roll it out pretty thin. I'm not going to make it super thin though, like a quarter of an inch is usually typical. Um, I don't make it quite that thin because Mike and I like ours a little bit more doughy, like just like we do our pot pie. We like to dough your noodles. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the thickness of that. And these are my noodles. You can do them in patches. Some people do them in patches. But uh, these are my noodles. And this little handy dandy thing is a noodle zoodle. And I want to thank DIY Dark Matter because he sent me that a while ago. And uh, now you can see what I'm doing with it. So if you haven't checked him out, check out DIY Dark Matter. He's an amazing wood turner. He made me some gorgeous spoons and spatula and ferro rods. These I'm gonna put right into our boiling water. Let them boil up. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Now, you can make new if you don't have a handy little noodle zoodle, which probably most of you don't. That's okay. Because what you can do is this, and then you can go roll it up like this, and then you can just cut it like this. And then you have and you have thicker noodles like this. So that's another way you can do this as well. And I'll put this in a different batch because they're going to be a lot thicker. But I just wanted to show you that. But uh, the noodle doodle is pretty, pretty handy dandy. Let's make this. And I remember as a kid going into the Yamish houses and they would have a huge dining room table as long as this room and they would have all kinds of egg noodles rolled out slicing them down with a knife. I remember that to this day. That was some serious noodle making. That noodle zoodle does a really nice job, doesn't it? Let's look at that. That's even good enough for thick spaghetti. Okay, so I'm going to let these go about 20 minutes to get done and tender. When they get done and tender, then I'm going to add them to uh, I'm going to add them to the uh, cabbage, and then we'll saute it all in together. 
So it's been about 20 minutes. These are pretty well done. I'm going to drain them. Uh, hit them with cold water so they quit cooking. Um, and uh, let them cool a minute. And then we're going to add them to our cabbage mixture. <clears throat> now you can see our cabbage and onion stuff caramelized. I'm just going to add in our noodles. And we're going to mix this in. And let this fry, saute a little bit and get some uh, color and fry on the noodles. That makes such a nice big dish of yumminess. Um, some people add ham, some people add sausage or tabasi. Um, and if you want to do a complete meal or bacon, that too, you are absolutely welcome to do that. This is obviously uh, the vegetarian version since I'm not adding any of those things. But I usually serve this as a side dish along with a ham steak or something, pork chops, something similar like that. And this was more today about showing you the actual Halushki noodles themselves. So we're going to get these fried up a little bit more with our cabbage. I might throw a little pepper in and uh, show you when it's done. Well, she's done guys. I'm going to pull her off fire and you know what comes next. So you know what time it is. Now take a look at that plate of wonderful Halushki goodness. Like I said, this makes a meal. If you want to add in the ham, sausage, kielbasa, kielbasa loaf, bacon, have at her. Uh, I like it as a side dish. With pork chops or meatloaf or ham steak, but uh, and it's a great way to great way to eat your veggies. And this time of year, yeah. So let's go. That's so good. This homemade, the homemade noodles just make it. I mean, you just can't beat that. This is good cold region comfort food here. Nothing replaces this. Mmm. So good. Especially as the weather gets cold now. This stuff really Sticks to your ribs. And it's got the onion and cabbage and garlic in there. Mm. And you saw those noodles aren't hard to make. They just take more time. It takes about an hour um, till you roll it out and you boil them and then you cool them and fry them. But man, is the flavor out of sight. Mm. So that is my uh, homemade halushki noodles. Homemade halushki, all from scratch, noodles and all. Cold region favorite and staple here in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. So uh, give it a shot. They're not hard. Give them a try. The flavor will be worth it. It will so kick, but the stuff that you buy in the store. Give it a shot. Just as good as the old uh, festivals and church picnics. Like, subscribe, and join me next time here in Helgas, Pennsylvania Cooking.